welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a video on my Thai constellation. Um, basically what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to break down the complete structure of a Thai constellation, talk about roots, propagation, um, and yeah, basically we're just going to take it out of its soil, take a big knife to it, and let's just get into it. As always, I have my gloves. Hmm, right. Now, what is a Thai constellation? Well, this is a Thai constellation. As you can see, it looks very similar to the Monstera deliciosa. That is because it is effectively the same plant. So, the difference between a Monstera Thai constellation and a Monstera Deliciosa is the fact that it is variegated. It has little speckles of a cream-like variegation here that look like little constellations or stars in the sky, hence the name Thai constellation. Um, the variegation can differ from something like this to... See this leaf up the top here? It's got like chunks of sort of cream, or you can get ones that are super highly variegated <laughs> and they can come up to even like big sectorials. About this Thai constellation, I actually won this Thai constellation in a Facebook competition with a company here in Melbourne called Botanica and I will link them down below. Um, they sell amazing rare plants regular plants as well, a lot of uncommon plants, and they're really reasonably priced. And they are also, to my understanding, the biggest plant warehouse in the southeast. Like I said before, we are going to be chopping up this Thai constellation. Um, I am going to see what the roots look like, but my plan is to essentially cut these three bottom leaves off here and create a new baby plant. And then I do have somebody interested in a tip cutting. Um, if you would like to know a little bit more about tip cuttings, propagation, and buying plants online, please let me know in the comments because I have quite recently purchased a fair few online and I've had a few incidences, but it's mainly been smooth sailing. So if you're interested in any tips and tricks about purchasing online, Comment below, and while we're at it, don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's get into it. As always, I have my trusty blue bucket here that's going to hold all of my soil. Again, if you didn't see my last video, I went on and on about how I don't have the regular soil that I usually have. It's the Osmocote Orchid Bark soil. I'm going to replicate that as best as possible, but the good thing about the soil that this plant is planted in is that it has a fair few chunks of orchid bark so we're not going to really need to make it much different. We're just going to add a bit more perlite into it because I can see that the moisture is um out of the way because that plan is worth a whole bunch of money to me right the video that I made yesterday and edited yesterday and uploaded yesterday was like a okay if you don't start doing something about this right now you're never going to do it so just do it and then make sure every video after that is not as much of a shit storm as that one so that's what we're going for today is a little bit more put together oh my goodness i've had this plan for probably six months now it's given me two new leaves and i can't for the life of me get it out of this pot. 
I don't want to disturb the roots too much, but oh my gosh. Oh, and I've got a hole in my glove. Right, okay. They're not even coming through the bottom. Why are they so hard to get out? As you can see, I fixed the lighting issue and the camera quality issue by basically rearranging the whole house and filming downstairs in the kitchen. All right, we're getting somewhere. Oh my goodness. So that is the root ball. Cool. So one really cool thing about Monsteras is that they really like to be pot bound. So, or root bound, how, whatever you're gonna say. So basically that means you can see all the roots here. They like to have their roots wrapped up in their pot. So because there is still a little bit of soil left in here, I'm gonna leave this pot, uh, plant in its pot. I'm not gonna change its pot size up, but I will change its pot size up when I repot it again, I guess, at the end of spring, end of summer. So like in six to eight months time, probably. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to loosen up the soil just a little bit, get these roots loosened a little bit as well. I want to actually be able to see the main part of the stem down here, which is where I want to cut it. So we're just going to try and get as much of that as, out as possible because I want to know that that particular part of the plant has significant roots to basically replant and turn into a new plant. But I really need to get the courage up and just chop it. Okay, while I'm deciding on where I'm actually going to cut it, I'm going to show you a couple of things. So, when you propagate any plant, um, you need to have a node. So, you preferably want to have a leaf, a stem, and a node, but you can grow cuttings from just a node, um, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So, this is a node here. A node has, it's a growth point basically, where when you cut the plant, that's where the new roots are going to grow. So you can see here that there's a node here and there's a little baby aerial root starting to grow. Maybe up against the black. Yeah, okay, there. Then you can see here, this is also a node, but this has a longer root growing out of it. And then you can see here as well, another node and a root. On every plant, nodes look different. Um, I can show you some examples if you were interested. So if you want to have a video dedicated to where to cut my plants to propagate them with a whole bunch of different plants explaining the nodes and how to, to propagate, comment below. I will make a video on that. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it. Oh, I've been thinking about cutting this bad boy up for so long and I just need to do it. Right, we're going to do it. I'm gonna do it so you don't have to do it. Okay. Um, it's gonna be difficult. Normally I would wanna use like some secateurs and stuff, but we're not professional like that. We're not a gardener. We have some coffee. All right. We have our knife, it's been disinfected, and we're just gonna cut it. Please, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do this. I don't know what I'm doing, so don't do this <laughs> um, until I tell you whether the plants are alive or dead afterwards. Um, right, just cut it. Done. Should I repot it? Hmm. Maybe I will separate them and then I'll plant them separately. That's what I'll do. Basically, what's going to happen is when the plant is cut, it's going to force the energy to start a new growth point. So this plant here won't start a new growth point from the bottom. I don't think it might, but I'm not, I'm, I don't think so. It's going to continue growing from up here. Whereas this plant here is going to be forced to create a new growth point somewhere, somewhere back here. It'll start popping out and start growing new leaves. Now, the only reason why I felt comfortable doing this is because I knew by taking it out of the pot that it had strong roots. So this plant as an individual has one, two, three really big strong roots and then a whole bunch of small ones. 
This plant as a baby literally has all of this. All of these roots here belong to this tiny little baby plant here. So we're just gonna sit that in there for now. And then these roots here belong to this plant. Now I did unfortunately, or did I? Oh, a tiny bit. I did cut a tiny little bit of the root. I don't know if you can see it just there, but it's still attached. It's yeah, it's gonna fix itself up just fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this smaller baby plant here in this pot. Beautiful. And then I'm gonna put the bigger one back in the pot that it originally came in. Just like that. I have a whole bunch of soil on the table in the mix that it's got some orchid bark. It does have a lot of perlite. It had just sunk to the bottom a little bit, which um, can happen. If you'd like a video on what perlite is, what it does, pros and cons, and also alternatives, let me know in the comments below and I can make a video on perlite. So this also has some um, choir core. You know that one, this C-O-I-R, it looks like this. It's basically like, it looks like coconut husk. Yeah, it's got that in it. I'm gonna put some of this horticultural charcoal into the mix. Um, basically what it does is it takes out the impurities of the water that you use. So a lot of plants don't mind just tap water. A lot of plants like the filtered water. So that's like from a filtering machine in your house or bottled water, for example. We're just going to chuck a bit in there, mix it up. My understanding is that it's going to focus more of its energy on pushing out a new growth point rather than growing roots. So it doesn't need to do that. So we're just going to put it in like that. It'll be fine. Worst case scenario, it's not fine and we need to repot it. I'm gonna make sure that the mix is getting all the way down to the bottom. Because this is such an airy mixture, it doesn't compact as well because it's not supposed to. It's supposed to be an airy mixture. So I just kind of like to massage, I guess, around the edges just lightly. Just like that. And I'm just going to, normally I would stop there. There's a little bit of, there's like maybe, I don't know, where's my knuckle there? Yeah, there's about up to my first knuckle of gap. So like that much between the top of the soil, the top of the pot, but I'm just gonna fill that up a little bit more, just again, being cautious that there's probably a few gaps that I've missed where the soil hasn't gone into it, just like that. And I do have a cover pot for this one, but it is upstairs. So I'm just gonna work it in, <laughs> work it in there for now and move it out of the way. But there is the baby Thai constellation. And then onto the big boy. So we're gonna need to bulk up this mixture a fair bit because it's gonna be not enough <laughs> to fill up what I've got. So I reckon I'm gonna chuck a bit more charcoal into it. Again, I don't like measuring things. We're just gonna, yeah, like nearly a whole cup, whack it in. I mix this in front of you a little bit so you can see what the hell I'm doing. Right, so I'm mixing like this. You know what it should feel like? Those little, um, those little styrofoam ball things that you put in bean bags. That's that is it. When you put your hands into your potting mix for plants that are supposed to be airy and well draining, like your aeroids, so your philodendrons, your allocations, etc. It should feel like you're sticking your hand into the insides of a bean bag. That's exactly what it should feel like. Another reason why I wanted to make this um, soil a bit more area is because the pot that it's going back into does have really good draining holes down the bottom, 
but there's nothing on the sides. These aren't holes, these are little ridges. So when I water, I tend to overwater a fair bit and I usually top water four bigger pots like this. Occasionally I'll put them in the bath and bottom water them, but that's for another day. So if you want a video on bottom watering, let me know in the comments below and I can do that as well. When I over water and the water actually floods up the top, yes, it's coming out of the bottom, but when it's sitting in the bottom of a pot, the only parts that are actually draining are these bits here. My understanding, like my logical thinking is that these bits are going to help soak up the water when you're bottom watering. And then these bits are going to help release it. So even though it looks like it's a well draining pot, it's not really. We're just gonna whack some of this in. I need a coffee. Right. Trusty cup, whack her in. Okay, so because these plants like to be pot bound, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna manipulate the roots so toxic um manipulate the roots to sit how they would if they were root bound so that the plant thinks that it's root bound um i don't know if that's an actual thing but that's just what i'm going to try and do it's sitting in there fairly comfortably i just want to make sure i don't really want this to be pressing up hard against the edge of the pot there because the new leaf which Hurry up and come through. There's a little nub. I don't know if you can see the nub there. Probably not. There's a little nub where the leaf is going to come through. So maybe I'm going to sit it. Yeah, okay. Does that look okay? Mm, yeah, okay. I'm going to sit it like that. Oops. So you can see there's some sticks, a bit of bark, some like choir cork core, <laughs> whatever, um, coconut husky stuff. There's like, you can see a tiny, tiny little bit of like actual, just normal, regular soil. Um, this here is a bit of charcoal. Um, there are some roots in there as well. That's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look like what it would if you were to dig like the top layer of the inside of like a rainforest or something. I would like to have a little bit more soil in this one. Okay, finished product, we have the repotted Baby Thai Constellation. Depending on how fast you guys help me grow, this one may be sent off in a giveaway, possibly, or I don't know. And this is the finished Thai Constellation Big Mama. This is going to be known as my mother plant now that I've taken some babies from it. And yeah, that's about it. Um, one thing I will say is that this guy here will probably need a little bit of extra support while it's growing its roots again to sort of get more root bound in the pot. Makes sense. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how he goes. And if they both survive, then you know that this is an okay way to do it. If they both die, however, I would strongly suggest against doing what I just did. But I guess you'll find out. That is the end of the video. I hope I was helpful in some way. As always, if there are any um, tips that you would like to give me or any uh, feedback, please let me know in the comments. And yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe and share the crap out of this video. Um, thank you and goodbye.